Today on the High Performance Build, we're gonna be installing the thermal buck that is for the windows to be installed in. When you have exterior insulation, I did not realize this before I actually built this house, you have to make adjustments. That's not as simple as, oh, just add insulation on the outside and everything will be better. You also have to then both trim and hopefully put your windows into insulation so that there's not a way for the heat to bleed simply around the windows through the framing that they're sitting in. So we're sitting our windows as far out as possible. You'll hear about any and Audi windows, and I am definitely not as much of an expert on this to be able to talk about the benefits of either one of those. We're doing Audis. And that's the end of it. This is what it's going to end up looking like. Obviously, I wanted to practice with this and get to be an expert before I made a video about how this all works. So you can see the thermal buck is installed. You can see the window is installed. We have not yet taped the window. You're going to see that in this video. So we'll, we'll go from beginning to end on how this kind of thing works, and then you'll see the windows getting installed as well. This is a two and a half inch thermal buck. If you buy different uh, lengths of thermal buck, this is what changes. So two and a half is the right amount for two inches of insulation plus a rain screen, which is really going to be three quarter inches extra. But this is going to enable us to fasten our cladding to the edge of the window and not have to worry about how we're going to get back in there now that we've sealed up everything. And you'll see what I mean. This part always stays the same. We'll call this the tongue for the purpose of this video. This part never changes. It's two and a half inches long. And then this is two and a half inches on ours. You can get, again, very, very different lengths. So this is total five inches. We have some two by four walls. We have some two by six walls. So this one type is gonna fit on both of those. Let's go measure it up. If you yourself have framed this and you are also installing the thermal buck, then there's probably not an issue because you know whether everything is square because you squared it when you framed the wall and put it up. Um, but if you really wanted to check it, you would measure this way and this way and make sure that these two measurements, doesn't matter what they are, make sure they're the same. Uh, you also want to just make sure, if you're being simple about it, that this distance is correct. And what is correct is that you take whatever your window manufacturer says they need for the rough opening, and you add an inch. And in some cases, we did not do that because we didn't completely understand how the buck worked in general. Thermal buck is a buck just like other bucks. It happens to be made out of a high density uh, styrofoam insulation, which is nicer when you're trying to control home performance. But no matter what you're doing buck wise, you're gonna need to make sure that you've done this right. And I know for a fact that my window is going to fit. If I'm even an eighth inch shy, I might go ahead right now and chisel this out because once I put the thermal buck in, there is no going back. You cannot chisel out the thermal buck. So make sure that you have really thought about that. And the same goes for if you put in a plywood buck uh, or a hardwood buck, probably you don't want to be chiseling that. You'd rather work on the, the rough face that you're talking about here. Also want to make sure that this is level. We have been lucky throughout the entire rest of this install that every window that we put in required no shims underneath it. So basically we're sitting it flat and if your window sill is in fact level the whole way across, then all you have to do is bring your window along, sit it in there. Again, you will see that in the next video. Likewise, with the door, we're gonna show you a window and a door. This one needs to be 38 by 82 for the door itself. But what I'm about to do with this buck is reduce the rough opening by a half inch on each face, which means an inch on each way. So I actually need 39 by 83. And if you haven't calculated it right, like this guy, then it's your job to make sure that you have this taken care of. So what we have here is 38, which is perfect if I didn't have a buck. Uh, and what I can do is actually take this entire framing member out. This was actually cut back to make it 38. I'm just going to take the whole thing out entirely and it's going to give me 39 and a quarter which is fine if you have a little bit more than you need. All you're going to do is shim and you can add some insulation in there. Try not to stuff it too hard because remember that air is the main ingredient in insulation. When we take this out, this is called the jack stud. A lot of people in the uh, viewing audience right now are saying, no, because its job is to hold up this header. But if you talk to a structural engineer, which I do on a weekly basis, we're gonna put three lag screws through the king and into this header, and we can take this thing entirely away, and the house won't know any different. Actually, it's better to do it that way than to use a jack stud. So we're gonna take this away, and then I'll be able to work width-wise, but of course, height-wise, we have 
82, which again, perfect if we didn't have the buck. The buck is a good idea. There, uh, let's talk about options for a second. I could decide not to use the buck on this. The two things that the buck is doing for us, the thermal buck especially in this case, uh, any buck will give you a surface to trim to on the outside. The thermal buck though is gonna also give me the ability to put my windows and doors out into that space and have it be insulated. So if I've got the thermal buck and it happens to be the right length, which is two and a half inches, all the way around the house, I know how it glues up, I know it's gonna be watertight, I know it's gonna be airtight, so I don't have to change my technique. And that is a big part of, number one, making a house a simple shape so that it's easier to build and I don't have to change my technique and my framing all over the place. And also using simple materials, using one material for all of the jobs that you have to do because once you learn that, you're an expert at that. Every single new material that any builder, and I don't care how many years they've been building, picks up, they're gonna have to learn how to use it. And the first couple windows they install with whatever it is that they're doing, they're gonna be learning. So hopefully they've chosen windows that aren't very important that have a 13 foot roof overhang over them or, or whatever it is. That's what we did here. And so now that I'm at the point where I can finesse these kind of like, ooh, this is a little bit more difficult, what I'm gonna have to do here, since I do want to use the thermal buck, is to uh, take all of the nails out of the sheathing from this header. I'm gonna save this header and all I'm gonna do is cut this and this up an inch and then put it up there. I'm gonna have to put spacers in here and here that are just a half inch. So this is all pretty easy. This is all materials that anybody on a build site has. Once I do that, then I'll have the opening that I need and I can put the buck everywhere, including on the floor. And this is something that I'll, you'll see in a few minutes how this works out with where the floor is gonna line up. We have a particular problem here though because I have a porch right outside my house and this is a cantilevered porch. The other decks on the house that are actually deck built are gonna be different than this, but this is the one place where I'm gonna have to change my technique with a different material because of this limitation that we've got. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. When you touch this stuff, you need to remember that this is the distances that we were just measuring. This is what's gonna sit right up against the framing. This is where we're gonna install the window. So this is inside the window. This is the house framing. Um, this is outside of the house and this is inside the framing. So this right here is what I'm gonna mark when I make my measurement. Now, if I was to mark this off right here, I would end up with one square edge and one canted edge. Uh, and I do not wanna do that. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do with every single piece of this stuff is cut 45s on both ends. The easy rule that I remember to make sure that I'm always picture framing this with the right angle is that the fat edge is always gonna be further out than the skinny little tongue. You can see that the fat edge is further out than the tongue. This stuff does not take pencils very well, so you wanna use a Sharpie. So I'm gonna subtract the 16th on every single piece, that way we end up with an eighth uh, gap total. And out of one eight foot piece of thermal buck, you can cut a three by four window perfectly with almost no waste whatsoever. So if you're gonna size your windows based on waste of thermal buck, then they should all be three feet by four feet. Uh, obviously that's a joke, um, but all along the process, we've been trying to figure out how to make it as efficiency uh, minded as possible material wise. But of course, anybody who's built before knows that if you make it efficient for the plywood, you're making it inefficient for the, the wood uh, framing. If you make it efficient for the wood framing, you're making it inefficient for the plywood, etc. So this is whole balancing act. Just do what you need to do. Get the windows that are the size that your wife enjoys. So 49 and a half minus a 16th, 49 and 7 sixteenths. Now, when I set this back up, and I'm going to go ahead and keep the angle here, if I'm cutting a lot, a lot, a lot of this stuff, which I did the other day, then I want to be moving this thing side to side as little as possible. Uh, so the first one I'm going to cut is the one over here. And you can see my little dot. So here's your 49 and a half piece. You can see that the fat ends are longer than the skinny tongue. So the last thing that you wanna do before you put this in is to make sure that you have all of your nails in place through the sheathing. So I'm gonna just go around the window and make sure that I'm nailed at the proper spacing for whatever my structural engineer or code has uh, said needs to be there. And once I'm sure that that's all taken care of and my um, you know, plywood or OSB is 
where I want it so that there's no little lips. And the reason, by the way, that you need that is because when you dry fit this stuff and each piece you're gonna dry fit, you'll see that it rocks a little bit, even when it looks perfectly flat. And part of it is that this OSB or plywood is going to swell a little bit. And so you'll end up with a little bit of a, a corner on it that's a little obtuse. And so I can make this cheat so that it's to the outside or to the inside, but there's a little bit of a difference of opinion on how exactly this should work, whether there should be nails or not. I actually would rather not put nails in this, but I'm gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions and put them in there to make sure this thing doesn't move. But if I put the nails in, it's going to cheat a little bit flatter. Luckily, we have two foot eaves everywhere in the house, and we're using all kinds of back damming and making sure that the water is not gonna be a problem. I've made sure that this fits so that I'm not gonna be in trouble once I add my sealant. If you check their website, they recommend a few sealants uh, only, and so you can get it directly from them, or you can get it yourself, but uh, obviously if it's part of a package, then that makes it a little bit easier. You need to make sure that whoever is installing this has invested in a nice caulk gun. If you get one that just squeezes as hard as you uh, press on the trigger, then you're gonna be tired in about two seconds because you're putting three big, fat beads along this thing. One right in the, the nook down the center here, and then one as close as possible. And the, the instructions uh, technically say to put it within a certain length or, or you know, this far from the edge, but I'm telling you, what you're gonna look for when you put this on is as much ooze out as possible to make sure that it actually is continuous the whole way down. And the way that you squeeze this in, especially as you start adding pieces, if you're not really close to the edge, you're not gonna be able to see where that stuff is. So once we have this there, we'll press it in. And this is the fun part. You really gotta And you can see the ooze out that we're talking about. This is just to make sure that there's a continuous water and also air sealing gasket around the entire thing. And uh, you're able to get this bead coming out at the bottom here as well. And we can see it all the way across. That means that we used enough of the goop. Sometimes you might feel like you're using too much goop. Don't worry about it. You're gonna run through at least one or two of those tubes on each window. Two inch roofing nails so that we go through this half inch piece of thermobuck, the tongue, and then into the, the entirety of the uh, sill underneath it, which is one and a half inches. And what I recommend is that you put these in which is easy to do before you actually drive them. So you just press hard enough with your finger, you don't even need gloves, and it'll go in. The reason being that you're gonna need to pull pretty hard. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I've got full contact ugh, while I'm doing this. And now this thing is not gonna move at all. Now we just put on the rest of the pieces. We're gonna go sides and then top. On the side, I have to remember not just to run my three beads, but also to goop the cut end of the piece that I'm meeting up with. And when I install this, I have to be a little bit more careful as I go. The first one is the easiest, but here I wanna kinda meet it up with the goop. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is instead of just slamming it in place, I wanna make sure that each of these stays as intact as possible. So I'm gonna try and get it snuck in so that each of the lines of goop only meets the surface of the house at the very, very end. You can see my goop on the back edge and hopefully goop on the front. You put these nails about once every 10 to 12 inches. I'm not really convinced that they do much. This glue being so tenacious that it's not really gonna move much once these, these things are in place uh, with the three beads of goop. But we read the manufacturer's instructions. It's always important to do that. For those of you who don't know this, reading instructions takes time, and time is something that we don't give a lot of contractors and building professionals. So you can't always assume that everyone who is actually installing this stuff has read the manual on it. It's possible that the builder downloaded 90 pages of information, but they didn't actually give it to the person who's gonna be installing this. So it's really important to make sure that that's clear. Now this last bit is tricky, the very top. First of all, you have to goop both of these corner pieces. 
there's a trick to this, which is that you can see, first of all, here are my three lines, just like before. But I'm going to be sliding it in this way. And if you can see the profile on that, what I'm going to have to do to fit it between this and this is get it up as close as possible and basically in contact with both sides. And now what I'm about to do is almost completely scrape off the sealant that is on the tongue here. But that's the less important of the two outer lines. So I'm going to smush this all the way in. And you can see that I'm making a huge puddle here and here. That's totally unavoidable. You won't be able to fix that. And when I go out and really press this up, then I'll be able to get that sealant on the outside oozed out, which is the important part. So now we're in line all the way around. You can see that I still don't have complete ooze out up here, but that's less of a big deal. You can come back later. We're actually going to come back later with tape anyway. You'll see that in the window install video. So now we have removed this extra jack stud on the door. We have moved the header up. We have attached it to the king with the lag screws and all that sounded like a lot of work and it was, it took an hour and a half maybe. It needed to be done though. Now we're uh, putting the thermal buck on here. Obviously we've got the beveled picture frame top edge, just like always. But on the bottom, we have this, which I did with my knife that I wear on me. Uh, and the reason is that we had to bring it up like this with the wood. Instead of a thermal buck, we've got wood buck. And this is pressure treated because it's gonna be sitting on this. We are gonna be uh, flashing over this with stretch flash tape. Um, and connecting to this once it's like dry and clean. But um, we're gonna wanna make sure that this and this are connected together. So we're sealing here. And then also when we come along with the stretch flash tape, we're gonna stretch flash over the thermal buck because now it is, we pretend that it's basically part of the structure. It becomes a part of the house once we glue it to it. Now something that I have not shown yet, which is very important, is that I'm gonna have to install a window up in this corner, um, and I'm gonna have to install trim on the inside, so that big blob right there isn't good. Finger, plastic, or paper, or cardboard, and you just come along and, so that I have a nice, even surface to be able to install against later. All right, so now goopy finger, clean finger. Got this all done. Uh, I'm gonna nail this in, obviously, just to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Uh, manufacturer says put nail pins through the corners like this. Um, and you can see that in the manufacturer's instructions. I am gonna skip that right now, even though it is recommended. And it's partly because I've put enough goop on here, which is probably more than most people do. It's not going anywhere. In fact, you can feel when you put those nails in that inside, if the thing wanted to shift, it would shift. The glue is doing most of the heavy lifting at this point. So I'm going to skip that part, but I'm going to come along later and make sure that all of my seams are either caulked or taped. And you'll see how we're going to do that in the next episode, which is the window install. So we're going to let this dry for 24 hours. Then we're going to come back and we're going to install some window and door. See you there.